Yesterday I showed you how to use Firefly in Photoshop, but you said, what about my model, bro? And because I'm the Wizard of Oz, today I'm going to show you how to use Automatic 1111 in Photoshop. Let's get started. Of course, a very important question here is why do we even need that? Well, the thing is, with Photoshop, you have a lot of very powerful tools for adjustment, for editing, for photo bashing, for creating your composition, for drawing what you want to create and then render over it. And this is rendered in multiple layers. So this is on top of that non-destructive. So you have complete artistic freedom. And that is incredibly powerful. Now, the very good thing here is this is super easy to install. The plugin is called the Auto Photoshop Stable Diffusion plugin. When you go to the page, you simply scroll down here and you can see here how to install. There is a one click installer. Click on that. This will bring you to a page that also explains to you how to do that. And here on the first point, you have already the CCX file. So you want to click on that again, and this will bring you to that list. And the good thing thing here is you will see that this was updated four days ago. So there is a team that is actually caring to improve that. You can even see here the latest bug fixes happening. So the next step would be to simply click on this link and download this to your drive. After you've downloaded this to your drive, you only need to double click this file and this will automatically ask you if you want to add this to Photoshop as a plugin. After this is done, you need to go to your automatic 1111 folder and look for the web UI user.bat. Right click on that, then show more options and click on edit. This will open up the text file and here in the command line arcs, you want to add minus minus API. Save that file close it and then double click to open up automatic 1111 as normal. As a next step, we are going to open up Photoshop and you want to go up here to file and new. Now here's a very important next step. When you create your file over here, you have the option for artboard. You need to unhook this because it will not work with artboards. You can set this to any kind of resolution, for example, higher resolution if you want to do out painting, but you can also set it to a low resolution. You would usually use like 512 by 768. So let's click on create here. And then on the top right side, you see this Lego brick looking icon. You want to click on that. There you can see the auto Photoshop option. So you want to click on that. And here already you have your interface, which has a lot of different options. Also take into consideration that on the side here, you can scroll down to see more options of that. Down here, you have multiple modes like text to image, image to image, in paint and out paint. Up here, you have multiple tabs. For example, there is also control net in here, where down here, you can choose the different methods, for example, Kenny, depth and so on. And of course, the models that you've loaded, all of that is loaded from your automatic 1111 folders as normal, because this is just using an API. API. So this is using your complete install of automatic 1111. Of course, it has to be pointed out here that this does not support all of the extensions that you have installed in automatic 1111. So only what you see here in the plugin can work. But now I want to give you a quick demonstration of how powerful this can be. So I'm going to the website pexel.com. I have here a photo of a library. So I right click copy this over and I will put this in here as a layer. With control T, you can resize the image so I can move that around, make it smaller so it fits. So now I have this as my background. Let's go back to Pexels and have this photo here. Right click, copy image. Again, we go back here to Photoshop and paste this in here with control V and then control T to resize it and move it. When you have resized that, you see down here, there is this hook to accept the resize and movement. So you want to click on that. And then as I showed you yesterday, Photoshop has an automatic background removal. So you can click on this button here. And now we have our lady with the books standing inside of the library. 
Now here I wrote as my prompt, I want to have a female wizard in a Hogwarts library. And then I have here my negative prompt. I'm in the image to image mode. My denoise strength is at 0.36. And now when I generate an image by clicking on this green button here, I will get a warning because I haven't created a rectangle. So this always needs a rectangle on where you want to create that. That means a selection where you want to create. Because I want to have everything, I'm pressing Control A on my keyboard. You can see now I have these end lines around all of my image. Now I click here on Generate Image. And you can see here that I have a beautiful scene that is oriented on my composition that I've created. And of course, you can still click here multiple times. Also down here, you have a batch size and a batch count so that you can create as many images and versions as you want. So I want to show you some additional functions here that are really nice. For example, down here, you can see for the selection mode, you have a ratio here and you have these sliders. Now they will both move at the same time, but keep the ratio and over here you have a multiplier that is shown to you based on the original resolution that you have so you can pull this slider higher and this will show you how much this is actually higher than your image resolution so you can render this as a higher resolution and get a better quality as you can see here with the image I have created now. Also a very useful function here is you have this camera which will create a snapshot of what you have on the canvas so far. So when you click here, you can see that now this has created an extra layer over here. Now the awesome thing here is because this is an extra layer, I can use all of the filters over here. And one of my favorite filters is of course the camera raw filter. So when I select that one, I have very similar adjustments to what I usually find in Lightroom. And this, for example, also gives me here the color mixer. And there I can adjust the colors. You can see, for example, for her rope, I can adjust the green. You can also see that the cords she has here in the front are a different color. So I can adjust that separately. Let's make this more blue. And then, for example, because we have a lot of these orange and red tones in the background, I could move the reds over to make the background more red. Something that is also very, very useful in the camera raw is the basic adjustments. Here you have exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, black values, texture, clarity, dehaze. Let's pump up the shadows a little bit. You can see that this will make the dark areas of my image brighter, but then I can also bring down the black values so I'm not losing on contrast here. And I can also go here with dehaze to bring down the haziness in the image. And now when we compare the before and the after, you can see that we have highly improved this image with very few steps. Again, all of that is non-destructive, which means that below everything, I still have my original image layers and I can of course still move them around, do adjustments, do more settings, paint different colors in here, all these kind of amazing things. I also want to show you the outpainting with this extension. So I created a bigger canvas and I'm going to go and use my square selection tool here. I'm going to hold the shift key and drag out a square. You can of course use any kind of shape for your rectangle. And I want to have here a cute orange cat sitting in a winter forest style of a digital drawing. I'm starting out in the text to image mode. So I create my initial image that I want to use. Up here you see a pop down menu. This should be for the LoRa's, but I couldn't get my LoRa's to load with this. And also when you scroll down here, you can see here that you have a button for height and show samplers. So here you can choose the sampler you want to use. Let's click on generate. And there we already have a very cute drawing of a cat in the winter forest. Now, of course, next for the outpainting, I'm switching over to the outpaint mode over here. And then I'm going to change my prompt to 
a winter forest. Next, I'm going over here to my selection. I click and drag it, but then also after that, I additionally hold the shift key. This will lock it into place. So, so I just move it over to the right side without moving it up or down. You want to have a pretty big overlap here for usually about 50%. Let's click on generate again. And as you can see here, this is a little bit of a hit or miss. So you have to do this multiple times. You also want to play around with the denoise strength setting down here. For me right now, I'm using 0.77. And here you can see that I could extend the sides of my drawing without painting and get some pretty cool results, although I did use quite an amount of tries. Let me know in the comments what you think about this extension. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye. What about my models, bro? Oh. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> All right, all right, one more time. Oh, that looks good. Mm. <laughs> mm.